Literally, this is mine, finasteride, to actually help stop my hair loss, which I think is falling out due to stress or hormonal, I don't know. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreadaves.com. Today we are going to be reacting to Alpha M, nine things that make men look insecure. And the reason being, one of the nine things is um, basically just a promotional offer, but it's also pretty revealing that this guy, like this, I would say of all of the self-improvement YouTubers, this guy probably has the, I don't know, best hair for relative to his age. Like this guy is in his 40s now and he has the same hair quality as the other self-improvement YouTubers who are in their 20s. Like it's absolutely insane what kind of hair genetics this guy has been blessed with. And you would think he pretty much assumes at this point, I'm you know one of the guys who's one of the very few minority of individuals with the fucking Ronald Reagan genetics and I'm just immaculate and I'm never gonna lose shit because for the entirety of this guy's life through his whole YouTube channel, it has not changed a bit. And he's been on YouTube since fucking Nam, <laughs> like he's been on for a while. So he, uh, like literally his first video was, let's see here. It's gotta be like a decade at this point almost, I would think. Fucking 11 years ago, dude. 2009, so October 1st, 2009. Next to your eyebrows. You know, a lot of times you'll get stray hairs that stretch out past the-, the And his hair does not look like it's changed at all. And he's in his 40s now. So this is like insane, like androgen insensitive, like fucking absolutely like nullified fucking immaculate, do absolutely nothing androgen receptors in this guy's scalp or something, whatever it is that's going on there that this guy is just a genetic phenom in this department. But I was shocked that he actually mentions in this video that he is now insecure about his hair loss and he's going on finasteride. The form, something recently I've become a little more insecure about is actually hair loss, which is the fifth thing that is going to make you look super insecure, which is combing over or putting a rug on it. If you are somebody that is losing their hair, you basically have two options. Option one is shave it off, go short, embrace it, be like whatever it is what it is. Literally, this is mine, finasteride, to actually help stop my hair loss, which I think is falling out due to stress or hormonal, I don't know. So he says, hair is falling out due to stress or hormonal or whatever. And then that is the justification for him to be on finasteride, which to me is pretty interesting because he knows there's side effects associated with it. He also knows he's gone his entire life with no hair loss whatsoever from at least what we can visually see. And like to me, it was just interesting that a guy who does not even know if it's stress induced or hormonal induced is willing to jump on a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor. So I don't know if he's seen like a lot of the content about, you know, being proactive and how, you know, if you don't get in front of it, even if you don't have any perceivable loss visually, that you will, you know, you're not, it's way harder to make bad ground than it is to prevent you from losing it in the first place. You probably won't notice loss until you've lost, you know, upwards of 30%, 40% of your fucking hair follicles in general. Like seeing a perceivable difference in the mirror, you have over 100,000 hair follicles on your head. You could pull out like 100 hairs, not notice shit in the mirror. You're not going to see any visual difference whatsoever. But once you get to 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 hair follicles miniaturized on your head, all of a sudden you look in the mirror under heavy downlighting one day and you notice like, what the fuck? Like, why can I see... My scalp so much easier now. Why is my hairline like so receded? Why do I have to comb it in this like special way in order to make it look decent? And then you realize it's not like it happened overnight. Rather, it's been progressing this entire time. So for him, maybe he's just very, very cognizant of the fact that even though he has fucking immaculate God tier hair genetics, that it could catch up to him too. And he would rather <laughs> keep his God tier hair genetics then risk being one of the individuals and hope he's one of the individuals who's totally immune to it for the rest of his life. Like trying to like fucking crossing your fingers and hoping your lucky stars that you have Ronald Reagan genetics in your hair. It's a fucking long shot, dude. So later in the thing he talks about, I'm telling you guys, it is literally like the easiest thing out there. And if you are somebody that is thinking that you might be, you're noticing a few extra hairs or you're just worried about it, guys. Now is the time. Do not 
not wait because the earlier you catch it, the sooner you can stop it, guys. Yeah, so pretty much he's saying exactly what I've been preaching for since I fucking started my channel, you know, get in front of it. The sooner you get in front of it, the more you're gonna keep because once you start noticing it, you're playing catch up. And at that point, you're probably never gonna get the baseline. And if you do, like you caught it early. So you don't wanna wait until you actually see the visual representation of 30 fucking thousand hair follicles burned off your head, you want to get in front of it and not get to that point to begin with. So I totally understand his logic here. And uh, I'm just shocked that the guy with like the fucking pinnacle of pinnacle hair genetics is hopping on finasteride too. So even the top dogs in this industry of the self-improvement niche are, uh, you know, not totally confident in their uh, immaculate hair genetics, even though he's gone. Like, it looks like nothing has happened to this guy in fucking 11 years. So I'm still a little surprised that he would say, you know, maybe it's stress, maybe it's DHT. You know what? I'll just hop on a fucking 70% DHT inhibition drug like that. So I don't know. Like, obviously a safe bet if hair is more important to, the, to you than the potential side effect burden but yeah you know ultimately it's a pros and cons weighing each out and deciding is the you know small chance of erectile dysfunction low androgen issues neurosteroid deprivation perhaps all of these things is that risk worth it to you for maintaining your hair because that is ultimately what you were deciding however fortunately the likelihood of that occurring to any perceivable degree is very low so you're probably going to be fine, but you can't guarantee that. So you ultimately have to weigh out the pros and cons yourself and say, what's more important to you at the end of the day? And for him, I was just interested that the pros outweighed the cons for hair loss prevention when he's gone this long. I thought he was just going to ride it out and see, like if he made it to his fifties with like this guy might now make it to his fucking seventies with literally like the God tier genetics uh, intact. So we shall see. It'll be interesting to follow him over the years and see how far he makes it because he's not going anywhere. He's been here since 2009, cranking out fucking content and um, helping men in a mass scale. He has a very, uh, you know, some people see him as a bit of a cookie cutter channel. You know, he does a lot of promotions, but at the end of the day, he has good advice and a lot of it is practical, applicable advice to men to actually improve their lives in a variety of ways. And it's cool to see, you know, these kind of channels starting to integrate some of the more like cutting edge recommendations, not that finasteride's really cutting edge, but a few years ago, you'd never hear about these kind of guys talk about this shit. They'd be talking about, you know, some fucking bullshit like uh, goddamn like vitamin supplements or something. And maybe that's just because the vitamin supplements were paying them at the time. And now there's telemedicine companies who actually offer affiliate deals to, you know, big channels like this who will promote their shit. I don't really know for sure, but either way, some of the cutting edge information is becoming a bit more palatable in the mainstream. And it's good to see. So anyways, it was cool to see this from Alpha M. And uh, yeah, we'll see uh, what happens with his uh, Norwood uh, like negative fucking zero status as he uh, continues here. Like I don't even know. I don't even know what you'd call this. It's like straight across, but then he has like a little bit that's like creeping forward to a degree. It's like trying to become a negative Norwood. It's fucking insane. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplace underscore more dates. Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including my TRT clinic. It's uh, all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. We also have pharma grade hair loss medications available through my clinic, as well as lab test panels I've designed myself, including the basic and comprehensive pre finasteride panels to assess your endocrine parameters and other basic um, health screening parameters in order to make sure that you have a reasonable baseline to go off of should you encounter side effects or to predict with a reasonable level of accuracy if you will encounter low androgen related side effects, gynecomastia development, et cetera, when you do start finasteride or like ideally you would have the blood work interpreted by somebody who knows what they're talking about before you decide if you take the drug. So that's why the blood test that's available there, I designed it for that very purpose. And then anything else I'm associated with, and by the way, you don't need it. It's just something that I designed for individuals, individuals who want the baseline. Because once you start this drug, you inhibit 70% of your DHT. If you start developing a titty, it's not like you can go back and get the fucking blood work. You know what I mean? So this is how you would predict if something would happen with some reasonable level of accuracy, you know, better than just fucking hoping, you know? So if you want to spend the money, you know, I think it's worth it. But if not, you know, the likelihood is you'll encounter no issues whatsoever. So, you know, that's uh, obviously in your favor too, but just keep that in mind um, transparently. Like that is 
look at the risk profile at the end of the day. So and anything else I am associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.